Well, if you, I mean, it's it's like anything. Well, could, you could factor. You could do a lot of different things. If we wanted to combine that together into a single fraction, you needed to have a common denominator. So you'd have to make this a squared over a, right? Because if you multiply this by a over a, then it's going to have the same denominator there. And then what was this b? You're right. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, you could. You're a few steps ahead here. A1 over A squared over A. You could factor it again. I mean, this is a single fraction already. If you needed to, you could factor the top of that thing, right? Just like this, you could, um, we can change this. This one's going to stay the same. This one, we need to make it have a common denominator. This is the equivalent of saying if you had 1 fifth plus 3, if you wanted to combine those together as a single fraction, you'd have to turn this one into a fraction that has a 5 on the bottom. You'd have to make it 15 over 5, right? And then the entire thing would be 16 over 5. It's exactly the same thing as that. This would have to be cos squared over cosine. Right? Cos squared over cosine is the same as just cosine all by itself. And that's going to give you 1 minus cos squared over cos. That's a single fraction. All we've done here is algebra stuff. We haven't actually used any trig identities that are replacing uh, one expression with another. What that We will. This expression is identical to this expression. You can show they're the same using algebra like that. If you wanted to check it, you could graph both of these. You could graph y1 equals this. You could graph y2 equals this. And then the two graphs should appear the same. You could substitute some values in. You could put a value in for x in there, work out the value of this. Substitute a value in there, work out the value, and just see that they're the same. You can always check your work that way. Have a question? Um, no, it's okay. If you put brackets and say cos x squared like that, if you write this, this is the ambiguous one. If you put the squared there, well, I mean, the 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 normal notation is to, I mean, probably I know what you mean because we're never going to square the x. But I mean, it's like asking your English teacher, well, is it okay if I start a sentence with a not a capital letter. Well, I know what you mean, but it's not what people do. I don't know. It's kind of the, for some reason, I don't know why mathematicians do that. I mean, they're lazy. They don't want to write the brackets, I guess. So they put the two over here instead of just writing the brackets around the whole thing. Um, other stuff to remind you of. This is all, <laughs> this is all get ready, like things that you need to know before we start or things you need to remember before we start. Um, Something that maybe maybe this is not a remember. I mean, it is a grade eight thing when you're dividing fractions. But the problem is you've never you didn't write division of fractions like that in grade eight. If you had a over b divided by a over d in grade eight, you probably would have written it. How would you have written it in grade eight? Yeah, you would have written a over b. Well, let's first uh, write it with this. You would have written it with that division symbol, right? You would have written it as that divided by that. Well, you, you could if you want to. For this, it might make more sense. Because then you're reminded of, in grade 8, then how would you have evaluated that? You would have changed it to yeah, times d over 8. Dividing by... What? Do I have that poster in here? <laughs> Mr. Photographic Memory. I don't have it in here, do I? Somebody has that. Somebody has a poster like that. Um, anyways, this is something that you have to recognize. The reason I point this out is because you might not recognize that this is division, right? This big line in the middle here. When you're writing this, you have to have nice, neat, orderly uh, stuff you put on the page or you're likely to get into trouble, especially because if we start having fractions within fractions, that actually you can use the word complex fraction to refer to that, fractions within fractions. Some people go A over B over A over D, and then they start writing the next line of their work here, A over B times, and it gets all mixed up together. What I would recommend to you is if this is the, the line, make it a really big line in between there, and then leave a big space, and then do your next step here if you're doing this. Um, Anyways, this is, and now could I cancel anything on this? You, because you can divide the top and the bottom by A, right? So you end up with D over B. The same thing is true here. 
if we have this fraction divided by this fraction, you can make it that first one, sine x over cos x, times secant of x over sine of x. And then you can divide the top and the bottom by sine, and you get secant x over cos x. Now, what we do later, we'll, we'll start to change that more. You can still do some stuff with this to make it simpler, but this is just the, the things we're trying to remember from previous algebra things you've learned. Uh, the last question here now are each of the following. Now, I think I told you before that if I ever ask, a, is this true or can you do this, probably the answer is no. But one of these is a yes and one of these is a no. If you have a fraction here that looks like that, can you split it apart? And then the question that goes with that is, if the bottom is two terms like that, can you split it apart? Which one is a no? The second one's a no. If you're ever not sure of these things, think about if it was numbers, just check if it's equivalent. Put it, you know, put a number in there. Two plus three over seven. Is that the same as two over seven plus three over seven? It is, right? Whereas if you have um, seven over two plus three, is that the same as seven over two plus seven over three? It's not, right? You could pick different numbers to see for sure that it's not the same, right? Um, but it's definitely not equal there, right? Not that you can, not that you could prove something by looking at one example here, right? But that's a way of kind of checking if you've got the right idea there. Sometimes you'll have to use all of these algebra skills, and the reason it's one step harder is because it doesn't look like this. It looks like this with trig, trig functions involved, okay? So let's uh, let's move ahead. That's all the... That is all the algebra skills, not all of them, but that's some of them. We're going to come up, algebra skills are going to come up as we go that you'll, you'll be reminded of or I'll remind you or somebody will remind you of.